Hello and welcome back to my channel. I haven't done one of these in a very long time. Let's face it, it's been winter. There's not really been a lot going on. It's been snowing, it's been freezing. To be honest, it hasn't really been very nice. So um, yeah, not much gardening has been taking place. But we are now in February and it is almost seed sowing time. I'm so excited. Yeah, I should probably say my name is Chesney and I am in the process of starting up my own flower farm. This is my second season of growing. Um, I started at the beginning of last year. Technically this is my first autumn sowing because I only started last year from spring. So yeah, this is my first autumn sowing but my second season of growing flowers. So I have some of my autumn sowings behind me. What's made it? The dog waiting patiently. The sun is shining, it is beautiful. I don't know what the temperature is in here at the minute. I mean, it's still only 10 o'clock in the morning, but it is currently 7.5. It got down to minus four last night, but that sounds very cold. It was minus seven or minus eight the other night. So it is warming up, it's gradually creeping up again. But um, I've heard the beast, rumours of the beast from the east may be returning. So, yeah, we'll have to make sure I protect these plant babies. I'm going to do a little walkthrough of what's going on. Bear in mind there's not really much going on. But I just want to give a little update of what has successfully germinated and stayed alive. Um, and, yeah, just show you a bit of the field work and stuff that I've been doing. So I'm going to flip the camera around and do a little walkthrough. So these are my autumn sowings. Um, I've got some olea here and over here. I've got some scattered around everywhere to be honest. Um, but yeah, all my frost fleece down there that I've been protecting them. So at the beginning, when it was freezing, I didn't protect any of these with frost fleece. And a lot of the snapdragons weren't happy about it. So yeah, I don't think he's he's definitely a goner isn't he um so yeah i didn't protect him i just i tried to tough love it out and they weren't happy about it so i did lose a lot of snapdragons but these ones are the ones that are still holding on so um yeah they are doing okay but i have been fleece fleecing them now so yeah, fingers crossed, they'll thank me now. But the Olea are doing very well. Look at all the new growth of this one. I'm quite surprised how well they're doing. Oh, she says and she just drops it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they're just waking up because they've been frozen, obviously. This is was Acrylegia, but I just completely neglected it. So to be honest, it just needs to go in the compost. Um, these Nigella, mm, they're not the best to be honest i'll probably i'll still sow them but i won't um still plant them out but i'm gonna start a fresh batch for cutting i won't use them for cut flowers i listened to a very interesting podcast about um the importance of the seedlings life and the the early part of the um plant's life affects the later quality of the overall like flowering and the plant health and stuff so if they've not had a very good start to life like these ones then they won't repay repay you later and their flowering won't be as good and all that stuff so yeah that's why I'm probably not going to use them for flowers but I'll plant them out somewhere in the garden just for the bees and whatnot um larkspur are doing amazing I cannot believe how well they're doing um, some of the I've been sowing them like succession sowing them so some of them are bigger some of them are smaller um, I've got some more germinating over here so some more coming through um, and I've also sown some more down here but there's no no sign of these yet they have been taking a while to germinate some the first lot took over two months so I've gone for white king and Carmaine King, I think it is. Um, so a white and a pink one. I've got some more over here. They're just very tiny. Um, I've got some Honesty that are doing really well. I actually foraged these seeds from the garden. They were the previous owner of the house. Had loads of them planted in a garden that self-seeded everywhere. So 
I took the seeds from those. These ones aren't doing so great. Um, oh, I've got some more larks, but up here, tiny ones. Some snapdragons that are not looking too great. Again, I didn't protect them the early days, but some are doing okay. This one looks quite healthy-ish. I mean, I'm going to sow loads, loads more, so I've got my Bruplerum. These are the only ones, these two, I think these two are definitely a goner. So these six are the only ones that have kind of survived and are looking quite healthy and putting on a lot of new growth. Um, my sweet peas that are finally starting to germinate, but these ones I did indoors. So I did a bit of an experiment, um, a trial run. So with these ones, you can tell are a lot further on, and these ones. But I sowed these. I had germination within three days of these, and these ones have only just started coming through. And you can see I'm still waiting on a lot more. They have taken about a month. So what I did with these, in fact, I'll probably do a whole new video on it. I did the kitchen paper towel method. So kept them in an airing cupboard wrapped in a, a moist kitchen towel, let them germinate and then planted them and it, it sprouted them a lot, lot quicker. So, but like I say, I'll probably do a separate video on them. Um, but they don't mind the cold. Cornflowers. Didn't have much luck with my um, first batch. They all kind of got a disease and died so they're not doing too shabby please don't ask me to pronounce it there's the tag i think a common name is like million bells or something but they're doing very well they're looking very happy um this is the achillea uh yarrow it's also doing very well it's had a bit of a growth spurt it's lots of new leaves so they're coming along nicely some little ones but yeah, these are just all from the autumn sowing. Uh, Gypsophilia, quite a few of those, looking quite happy and healthy. Um, what have I missed? A neglected tray of fever few. But I've actually got some self-seeded outside the house that are ginormous, so to be honest, I'll probably just use those. <laughs> I have got more seeds, I will sow some more of these, but... Yeah, they've been in here for a very long time. And this is the outside patch that I've been working on. So this was my first season bed. I had uh, three beds. These were two by 10 meter. That one was one by 10 meter. And then I had a little two by five meter at the back, I think. Um, and a strip along here that I planted the dahlias in. So that was my first uh, season. It went really, really well. I had sunflowers along here, cosmos along here, and just snapdragons here. I didn't actually use that bit or the end bed. Um, so I was just kind of trying, and all my dahlias, like I say. But yeah, I was just kind of trialing it all, seeing how it went. And then I've extended for this year to this bit. Um, I have been doing some no dig bed prep. So. I've been using loads of cardboard, layering all the cardboard down, using the soil, um, the compost to mulch on top. And then I've been using these uh, weed membrane um, because the long term goal is to have no plastic and just have open beds. But there's a lot of um, weeds and stuff in here, stinging nettles, um, bits and pieces that unfortunately the cardboard and compost alone. So don't work so in here I did two layers of cardboard I did layer of cardboard layer of compost and the grass and stuff came through so I did another layer of cardboard another layer of compost and there were still like perennial weeds and stuff that were coming through so I've had to use the plastic to help suppress the light um so yeah long-term goal is to hopefully not use plastic but I will try and reuse this as much as possible so that I'm not uh yeah being wasteful and stuff i'll actually go in here and show you what's in this bed because so, i have actually got this one planted up these were failed uh sweet williams that are just neglected so i'm gonna dig those out because like i said about earlier about the plants start in life massively affects the overall quality these have had a not very good start so 
yeah, they're coming out because I need to utilise the space. But these are sweet rocket that I planted, I sowed last summer because they're biennial and I um, planted them out uh, late last summer I think it was, early autumn, late summer and they are doing very well. Bearing in mind these have had no protection, um, they've just been left to fend for themselves and they were buried under a massive wad of snow for quite a few days. But yeah, they're looking very healthy. The sun's not very good, it's very bright at the minute, so... But yeah, and it goes all the way down. I have lost some to slugs and stuff, but doing okay. You can see some stingy nettles here trying to make their way through, so I'm just trying to pull those up as much as I can. And there. But yeah, I need to burn the holes in. So I've got paths. These are the paths. And then I've got bed, and I've got path, bed, path, bed, path, bed. So yeah, I, one, two, three, four, five, six beds, six beds, seven, and then it goes on to the longer ones. So I've got seven shorter beds, and then it goes on to these longer ones. And then I've just got to finish off this side. I've got to cut this grass, to be honest, lay a path down here, and then, yeah, lift these up add some more compost and cardboard and stuff and relay the membrane down um, a bit nicer. I'm hanging out my frost fleece to dry because the trouble I'm having is getting wet in the low tunnel and then it's um, becoming getting frozen then becoming really heavy so it's crushing the ranunculus in that bed. Got a little one having a nap in his pram. He loves an alfresco nap. I've got the dog waiting for me like what are you doing but yeah this is the so I've done that half just got this bit to do and what I did was I removed the fencing from in between these beds so now I've just got one big bed so I need to cut this this is all this grass this is where the fence was so I need to cut it all back and then lay another path um, and I'm gonna lay a path here because where I walk up and down alongside this like little low tunnel that I've built it's getting really muddy now so it's getting a bit slippy so I'm gonna yeah lay a path down here um but these are the ranunculus so they start from here I didn't quite use the full uh 12 meters but you can see already look this is what I the trouble I have the grass that's come through so I need to cardboard and compost that again and I am having it starting to come through all this bed as well but I'm just gonna have to work with it unfortunately for now but yeah these are all the ranunculus that I've been through it bless them but they're going strong I've never grown ranunculus before so hopefully they do okay but they're looking very healthy they're putting on lots of new growth some of them are not doing too well but I think that's why you plant so many you can ac account for a few losses but this is what I'm talking about with the frost fleece being quite heavy it's like bending them but yeah they're looking looking nice and healthy and pushing out lots of new growth so that's a positive at least they're happy that one looks quite nice as well then where's one that's not doing so well? These ones are a bit small and it looks like it's been eaten. Quite small still. But they're still pushing out growth. So yeah, fingers crossed. That's my cue to go. The dog has just walked himself back home. So I'm gonna go back in. I'm going to do some more planning with my seeds and what I've got to sow. I'm thinking I might start near Valentine's Day. What better day to start? And that's definitely my cue to go now because little one woke up early from his nap so I am going to go in but thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. I will hopefully post a lot more videos soon. Now I'm out in the garden more I will hopefully be able to share a lot more um, of what I get up to.